like, comment, and subscribe for more content. What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Podcast. I'm DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And in today's podcast, I wouldn't say we got quite a bit of Funko Pop announcements, but we got a decent selection of Funko Pop announcements. Like we said last week, it will kick off with those Junji Ito collection pops. Not only will the announcements range from December 2nd until today as we record this on, what day is it today? Is it the 9th? I've lost count of December already. I think it's it's the, 8th. it's the 8th. See, I'm already losing my count. December 8th. So it would be December 7th. That would be the last day of announcements we talk about for this podcast. So almost a week worth of announcements. But then also, like we had mentioned last week during our outro, we are going to be having our own top 10 wish list for Funko Pops for 2021, which we'll get into more detail about that and how it's going to be different from last year's when we get to that segment. But without further ado, let's talk about the first set of Funko Pops that we got listed here and you guys will see on your screen. So kicking off is the Junji Ito Collection Pops, which we have a whole wave and we have five of them, one of them being an exclusive to Books a Million, which is Cursed Hideo. Then we got Yuko Sushi Tsuji, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. That was a tongue twister and a half there. Tomi and Miss Fuchi, which these are available for pre-order now at various retailers and are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then for the Pop Rocks lineup, we got Ozuna, which this is expected to be released as early as March 2021. Then on that same day, I should have mentioned these are all December 2nd, Playhouse which is a retailer in Thailand, had announced their own exclusive of a Mickey Go Thailand Mickey Mouse Pop, which this is available, I think, for pre-order now, but they are going to be starting to actually sell these on December 15th. And then on the same day, Funko had announced a wave of Selena Pops, also for the Pop Rocks lineup, which there are three variants. There'll be a common variant that is Glitter, a Funko Shop exclusive white dress diamond collection variant. And then we got ourselves a diamond collection Hot Topic variant of the same common variant, which those are expected to release as early as March 2021. Then Funko had announced the first of six pops for a brand new pop deluxe set called Victory Shwarma, which we have Bruce Banner, aka The Hulk, which obviously these will be exclusive to Amazon, just like the Avengers Assemble set, which these are available for pre-order now and are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then Pop Culture had announced an exclusive pop of Simon Bar Sinister that will be glow in the dark, and it's from the series Underdog, in which that is available now on Pop Culture's website to purchase, but it's unknown of when and where it will hit up US slash Canada. Then on Friday, December 4th, Funko had announced a Funko Shop drop of a few pops. First off being Rudels for the Fantastic Plastic lineup, which obviously it's a Funko Shop exclusive and it was limited to 3,000 pieces, along with two gingerbread pops of Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Those were available on December 4th, but like I had mentioned, Rudels has been sold out since, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, both gingerbread pops are still available on the Funko Shop. Then announced on that same day, Star Wars Celebration had announced their own exclusive glow-in-the-dark holographic Obi-Wan Kenobi, which this is being not given out, but there's a raffle going on. This only has 3,000 pieces to it. So I think starting, I would like to say it was like that day up until the 17th, I believe, there's going to be random different selections of drawings where if you get chosen, then you have the chance to purchase this pop. So there's going to be kind of a drawing to get this, kind of like a lottery. And then confirmed on the Funko app, we have ourselves Yusuke from Yu Yu Haku Show, which this is a Hot Topic exclusive in which this is available now due to the fact that I have seen some Hot Topics get this pop in. And then Funko also confirmed on the Funko app of a wave of the Falcon and Winter Soldier pops, which I'm pretty sure this is an upcoming Disney Plus series, which we have Falcon, Winter Soldier, and then Baron Zemo, which I'm going to assume this is going to be the main antagonist of this series. 
And then last but not least, we have ourselves Sam with Razor Candy from the Trick or Treat lineup, which this is a Spirit Halloween exclusive, and this is available now to order off of Spirit Halloween's website. So first off, we got the Junji Ito Collection Funko Pops, which these are some creepy looking Funko Pops, I tell you. Very detailed, of course. You got the one pop where it's got a face coming out of a face, so it's almost like two heads. You've got the Books A Million exclusive, which has these holes in their face, and like the one eyeball is like dropping down, which is just really creepy and crazy. I think the character Miss Fuchi, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not knowing me. That's a very cool head sculpt on that pop. I don't really remember the last time we've ever had a head sculpt like that for any Funko Pop. And then you have the character with like a slug coming out of their mouth, like crazy. This is pretty cool lineup. Then we got ourselves Ozuna, which I have no clue who Ozuna is. And a lot of people have no idea who Ozuna is. Then we got the Mickey Mouse Go Thailand pop, which it's not too bad. I mean, it's cool that, you know, Thailand's going to get their own exclusive. That's going to be hard for any hardcore Mickey Mouse fans in Canada and the U.S. to get. So I guess that's cool that they're getting this. Then we got the Selena Pops, which there are a lot of people hyped for these Selena Pops. I know, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this past Friday, the Selena documentary dropped on Netflix. So that's kind of the promotion, I think, that's going on with these Pops. It's cool in that aspect. I like how there's a specification for even the common, which I'm kind of curious to see how it turns out when you got glitter and the diamond collection of the same attire. And then you got the Funko Shop exclusive, which I know some people, I didn't get to read too much of the comments because there were so many comments, but I know people are hyped for the Funko Shop exclusive because I think there's some sort of significance to it. Like I think it was like an attire she wore at like an award show, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. If anyone's a Selena fan and they're listening to this podcast right now, comment in the comment section below if I'm right or wrong. And then I should also mention that it looks like they'll be continuing with the brand new Funko Shop exclusive sticker that will be put onto this pop, which I think started with Sideshow Bob, actually. Then we got the Avengers, oh, I almost want to say Avengers Assemble, the Victory Shwarma scene. I got so used to saying Avengers Assemble. So now it looks like throughout 2021, it looks like on the podcast, we're going to be discussing about Victory Shwarma, which at first I totally forgot about this, which I thought what was going on is that because they made like the scene from the first movie, they're going to make scenes for the second movie, Age of Ultron for 2021. But What this scene is, Victory Shorma, is actually a post credit scene in the first Avengers movie where I think near the end of the first Avengers movie, Tony's like, you know, I hear shawarmas are good. You want to go eat some shawarmas? And then I think like Captain America or someone or Thor says like, our job's not finished yet. And then after the credits, you see all them eating shawarma. So I think what's going on is that they're taking all six characters and it's going to be essentially they're connecting the tables together and they're all eating shawarmas and they're doing some sort of pose. I feel like that's what's going to go on. I mean, so far, the Hulk one looks awesome, or I should say Bruce Banner in this case, considering he's got a lot of stuff on the table. Simon Bar Sinister. I don't remember if I've seen Underdog or not, but I'm liking the colors that glow in the dark, which are the head and you got the test tube, which not too bad. Then we got ourselves Rudels, which I'm actually pumped for this pop, honestly. I wouldn't even care if Funko decides they're going to keep continuing on with this Oodles character and make so many different variants. You got the original Oodles, Spicy Oodles, which MD and I own. And now you got Rudels, which is actually spicy chicken noodle soup because I know someone posted a picture and it says on the lid of Rudels that it says spicy chicken noodles, which I even love the look where it's got like the beak for the rooster. It is awesome. So I'm hoping next, if you're listening to this Funko, Beefy Oodles should be your next character and he should be like jacked he's got like one bicep that's like super jacked maybe he's using the chopsticks as like doing bicep curls do that funko call it beefy oodles or like arnold schwarzen noodles maybe that's what you should call it do it do it funko and then the gingerbread pops this is actually a unique idea i never thought of this idea where for christmas time they could just make disney characters now and make them into gingerbread which isn't too bad honestly at least we're not getting a chrome mickey mouse or something that's green and red for christmas and same with Minnie. i'd like to see what they use for other characters in the future i do feel like though if they continue this the next characters will probably be like goofy and donald or something like that they won't go so far in advance like we probably won't be seeing any toy story gingerbread pops anytime soon probably for not for another couple couple of years at least then we got the obi-wan kenobi pop 
I honestly never thought that, like, I thought that they would make this, but I didn't think it was going to be for the Empire Strikes Back lineup. I would have thought about it as, like, Return of the Jedi because of, like, that final scene where you got Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda all in ghost form. But it's cool that they did end up making this. I like it, and I like the way that they did the colors for the holographic, where, like, the beard is a little lighter, and same with the hair, and the eyes are darker, and it's going to glow in the dark. But like I always mentioned, blue is not the greatest color when it glows in the dark most of the time. So hopefully the blue looks very nice in this case because this will look mint. Then you got Yusuke. Pretty cool. I like the design of what's going on with the face and kind of the tattoos that's going on and even the hair. Falcon, the Winter Soldier, I know people are pretty pumped. I wouldn't say super pumped. I feel like there's more people pumped for WandaVision than they are Falcon and Winter Soldier. So far, these characters look pretty cool. And then we got ourselves the Trick or Treat Pop. Sam with the Razor Candy, which is not too bad. I feel like the other variant, like the Deluxe, was a little better. So starting off with the Junji Ito collection, yeah, like you said, these are very creepy, weird pops. I actually didn't notice with the Books A Million exclusive how the eye is actually dropping down the face, which that's a cool little added detail. And I love that there's the second head there. That looks really good. All these pops actually look really good. I just don't know enough about the show to really say too much about them. And like you said with that head sculpt, yeah, we haven't really seen a lot of heads like this. I believe there was a head sculpt for Rocky Horror Picture Show, which was similar to this one. There's one other that I'm thinking of that I just can't seem to actually remember what it was. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of heads that have such a defined chin like that. Ozuna, yeah, I also have no clue who this is, which is pretty uncommon for me with Pop Rocks Pops. I normally know exactly who the person is, but the pop looks all right. I mean, it's not really in any pose, so that's kind of like a defect, I guess you could say. It's like Funko's going back to the olden days of just straight down arms. But the head sculpt, I think, looks really good. I like how the hair looks. There's a notch in the eyebrow, which is a good added detail. And those glasses look cool too, especially how the top like trim kind of has some spiky detail, I guess you could say. So overall, it's an all right pop. If I knew who this person was, I'd probably have more of an opinion on it. The Mickey Go Thailand pop. This is cool. Kind of a weird Mickey pop, but... At the same time, it is cool that Thailand is getting an exclusive, and I would assume there would be a new sticker with maybe that Playhouse exclusive sticker on it, so that's kind of neat. The Selena Pops, these are great. All three of these look good. Yeah, like you said, the common is glitter, so that's really cool when you kind of have a specification for a common pop. But then you have diamond collection pops that make sense. And it seems like recently, within the past few weeks, Funko has actually been making sense with diamond collection. And that is great because there's been a lot of really, really bad diamond collection pops. Maybe they're actually listening to our podcast. Yeah. And speaking of them listening to the podcast, this segues right into the next pop here with the Bruce Banner. This is awesome. I love this. And it really makes me think that my idea of a potential office set could possibly be in the works one day because this is exactly how they could do it. That's exactly what I had in mind with bases like that that would kind of click together. And this thing just looks great. The Bruce Banner pop itself looks pretty good. But then that table just filled with like, the only thing that's really noticeable is fries and ketchup in a couple cups, I guess. I don't really see quote unquote shawarma there, but it looks really great. And if you look, there's like napkins on the floor too, which is just hilarious. This pop looks great. I can't wait to see all of these pops Unfortunately, it will probably take about a year till we see all of them. The Simon Bar Sinister. This is a cool looking pop. I have very little memory of Underdog, but I do remember it. And this looks great. I hope that glow in the dark looks awesome because obviously he has a yellow head that will be glowing green. And then that test tube as well. Like, I think this is going to be a really cool looking pop. Then we have Rudels. I have such mixed opinions on this pop just because one, spicy chicken is my favorite type of ramen. So I kind of like it for that. And then I also really like how like his thumbs up has the flame so that you know that it's actually spicy chicken ramen. But I don't know, I thought we were kind of just done with the oodles pops, but I kind of want to see them go on, but they got to do something with those noodles coming out of the head. I think those just look like gross hot dogs or something. They look like hot dogs. I don't like that. Like I've discussed it before with the spicy oodles is that when you eat ramen that's spicy, it's not the noodles that change color. They're still just normal ramen noodles. It's the flavoring. So it's the broth in the cup. So if they were able to do it, like represent that it's spicy through that way, rather than just making these weird hot dog looking noodles, I'd be more open to get this. 
So then moving on to these gingerbread pops. Now, like you said, these are a cool idea, I guess. But it's kind of like when you buy a pop like from recently that I can think of like Soul, where you have a pop that's so small, you kind of feel like you're not really getting your money's worth out of buying this pop. And that's kind of how I feel with these gingerbread cookies, even though I would assume they're probably solid all the way through, whereas pop heads are obviously hollow. So I guess there's probably more plastic that goes into this, but they just seem kind of cheap to me. Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is so cool. I'm very upset that it's limited pieces because I would like to have this in my collection, but that's going to be a hard one to get. Hopefully, like you said, the glow does look good because just the pop itself looks so great. I really love how much that beard pops. Then you suke. This is a cool looking pop. The first thing I thought when I saw the picture on like Instagram or whatever, before seeing what it was and seeing the box, I was like, ooh, is this a random new Yu-Gi-Oh pop? And then I realized I'm like, okay, no, that's not a Yu-Gi-Oh character at all. But that was my first thought. But this pop looks really, really good. I like how much detail is actually in this kind of simplistic pop. The hair looks phenomenal. Then the tattoos are pretty great as well. And then the pants look pretty cool with the rips. And then you have, obviously, he's wearing one shoe. So they have to do a mold for a shoe, I guess you could say. And then they have to mold a bare foot as well, which is really great. This pop is actually pretty cool. And I'm not surprised it's a Hot Topic exclusive. Then I don't have a lot to say about the Falcon and Winter Soldier pops, just because I'm probably not going to watch this they're very plain pops for being Marvel. Marvel usually has, especially with some of the stuff we've seen recently, like that winged venom, like that thing was crazy. And then I could see these pops being $4 at EB Games in a year from now, basically. Then this new Sam, this is all right. I just recently picked up the deluxe version because I wanted the Spirit Halloween sticker for my collection. And I think that's a really good pop. I mean, it's a deluxe pop, so obviously it's going to look good. But I just don't think we need more trick-or-treat pops. But it would have made sense if this came out like a month and a half ago before Halloween. But that's just my opinion. All right, so we'll move on to the next set of Funko Pops, which range from Saturday, December 5th to yesterday as we record this, which is Monday, December 7th. So kicking off, Pop Culture had announced an exclusive metallic bumblebee for the Transformers Retro Toys lineup, which that is available now on Pop Culture's website to purchase. December 7th, on the Monday, Funko had done another Funko Shop drop with three Pops, we got ourselves an artist series Scooby-Doo, which is all purple. Snake Juice Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. Then we have a Trooper Leader variant of Snoopy with Woodstock, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, the only one that had sold out that day was the artist series Scooby-Doo. But I think Ron Swanson and Snoopy with Woodstock are still available as of this recording on the website. And then as a part of Mando Mondays, we got ourselves first a glow-in-the-dark Mandalorian flying, which will be an EB Games slash GameStop exclusive, in which that is expected to release as early as February 2021. But then we got ourselves a glow-in-the-dark Moth Gideon pop and tea bundle, which that's going to be a Target exclusive, and that is available now to purchase in stores and online then obviously confirmed on the Funko app, Funko obviously had confirmed the pops featured in the latest Marvel Collector's Core subscription box, which I think was called Infinity Saga Post Credits, something like that, in which we got ourselves Captain America from Spider-Man Far From Home and Nick Fury from Avengers Infinity War, which it was available through Amazon like all of the other Marvel Collector's Core box, but I think currently is sold out like it usually does and then will restock within the next month or two but at a higher price than you would get if you had the subscription. And then the last set of Funko Pops that we are going to be talking about are brand new Conan O'Brien Funko Pops, which we got ourselves here. Conan as Chucky from obviously Child's Play, Conan as Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park, Conan as Wonder Woman from, of course, it would be Wonder Woman 84, I believe in this case. Conan as Marty McFly from Back to the Future, but recently announced was Conan as Aquaman, which this will be limited to 500 pieces. And starting what would have been yesterday, these will be given out all the way until the 17th. You'll be given some sort of code, I think, through every episode of Conan O'Brien show or something like that. And then you have a chance to actually get this. 
Starting off with the metallic bumblebee, from the photo that we're looking at right now, it looks pretty nice, honestly, the way that the yellow is. It kind of like pops up really nicely. It actually, the metallic variant of this looks better than the metallic variant of the Optimus Prime that was Amazon exclusive. It's not a bad looking pop. Then we got the Artist Series Scooby-Doo, which this is all right. I mean, I feel like with the colors and everything, it's just, it seems more Halloween-ish rather than Christmas themed, especially because all these pops, they're going to be coming with the Funko Shop holiday sticker where it's the white, red, and green sticker. I feel it should have been like a Halloween drop. Then we got ourselves more Parks and Rec pops, which I know people have been hyping for for so long because if I'm not mistaken, we haven't had Parks and Rec pops since 2018, I believe. So this is like the first time ever on a Funko Popcast, I believe, that we are going to be talking about Parks and Rec Funko Pop since we started in 2019. It's cool that we finally get to talk about Parks and Rec. I have not seen the show yet, but I've heard nothing but good things about this show. And this variant, it's not too bad. I'm kind of curious what he's doing, which makes me want to watch the show. Snoopy and Woodstock, the Trooper Leader variants. These are pretty cool. I'm very curious now. It's probably going to be like a two for one deal, I assume. It's not going to be like Woodstock on like that tree stump as shown in the photo provided to us. It's probably just going to be like a two for one deal, like you get Sylvester Cat and Tweety for the Looney Tunes lineup, but it's pretty cool. I mean, more Peanuts pops, not a bad lineup. Then we got ourselves the Mando Mondays pops, which this is way better, like way better of a reveal than that red chrome pop that we got last week like by far. I do like what glows in the dark with the Mando, which is the flames coming out of the jetpack. And I'm curious though, also, does the smoke also glow in the dark? Also, it looks like it will, judging by the way that this glam shot is showing us. I'm curious to see this in person and see videos eventually on reviews. And then you got the Moff Gideon pop and tea bundle. This is pretty cool. Honestly, I love the t-shirt. I popped huge for this scene. This is right at the last episode of season one, I believe, where Moff Gideon just busts out the dark saber. And obviously what glows in the dark is the dark saber, which is totally understandable. And I think it's really awesome. If you don't have a Moff Gideon pop, I suggest getting the pop and tea bundle just because you get a cool t-shirt, you got a decently cool box, and then you got the dark saber where you can look at it during the day and you see that's a cool pop. But then when it's nighttime and you get a chance to use a black light and check that thing glow in the dark, that will look sweet. I can't wait to actually see how that turns out. Then we got the Infinity Saga. These are all right. I mean, these are post credit scenes. So not a lot of people remember this. I don't even remember the Captain America scene, honestly. But the Nick Fury scene from Avengers Infinity War, this is when everyone is turning into dust. That's exactly what's happening. When Thanos snaps his fingers in the movie and everyone's turning to dust, it is Nick Fury in the process of turning into dust, which I've heard many opinions on this. I actually watched a video recently of an unboxing of this, and it didn't turn out as well as the glam shot that we got here is turning out, like the way that the dust is. It's more of like one color and it's translucent. It didn't really turn out all that great. So it's a little disappointing. Pointing. Then we got the Conan O'Brien pops, which these are some cool Conan pops, honestly. We've seen some that were like I eat, and then we see some that are terrible, but then some are great. But like this whole lineup is pretty cool, actually. Conan as Chucky, not too bad. Pretty cool. I love the blood splatter and the scars that's put on there. Conan as Aquaman, pretty cool. Limited to 500 pieces, so I can only imagine what the price is going to be on eBay when someone actually gets this pop. The Marty McFly, I noticed actually, I think that Marty McFly hoverboard mold, the body, is actually from the original Marty McFly on the hoverboard that was a fun exclusive that is worth like $200 Canadian and I have yet to get in my collection. And then I kind of funny they did Dr. Ian Malcolm. It seems like a Conan thing to do where he would put himself in that kind of pose for a Funko Pop. And then I feel like there's always a Conan Pop of him dressed up as a girl character, just because that's also like a funny thing that Conan would do. But I feel, in my opinion, the best one I feel would be like, I want to say Aquaman. I feel like the pose and like kind of how you have a stand going on with it is pretty cool overall. Although obviously you would think I would say Marty McFly because of Back to the Future, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like the Aquaman looks pretty cool. So now we have some more retro toys pops. And honestly, this Bumblebee looks great. I like how the metallic looks. And yeah, I think it does look better than the Optimus Prime, which is pretty cool because obviously Optimus Prime gets a whole lot of love when it comes to Transformers, obviously. 
So I didn't realize until you were talking about this artist series, Scooby-Doo, that it's actually bats that are on his head. And yeah, that makes sense with what you said about how it's kind of Halloween themed, whereas like a Christmas related pop. And I, I don't know, I just don't really like this. And it is purple. So you'd think I would just mark out huge for it. But I'm going to hold my ground and say no. The Ron Swanson, this is pretty good. I like this. The pose looks so good, actually. Like, the head's pretty good, but that body just, it looks really, really nice for some reason. I don't know why. That's my favorite part of this pop. Then the Snoopy and Woodstock. This is really cool. I really enjoy these. This looks good. I might end up trying to get this just because I don't really have any Peanuts pops, but I do want that deluxe pop where they're on the doghouse. I thought that was really, really cool. Then this Mando pop. Oh, man, this thing's great. I really hope that the smoke is glow in the dark as well because I think that'd be super, super cool. This thing looks awesome and I think I will probably have to buy this because, uh, I don't know, I just really like this one. Then the Moff Gideon. This is really cool as well. I'm thinking about buying this as well. I don't have a Moff Gideon pop, so there's some potential that I get this. I think the pop is the best thing out of this box, and I never say that with pop and tea combos. It's usually either the t-shirt or the box. The t-shirt is all right, but I think it could have possibly been better. And then the box is hot garbage. That box just sucks. Like, they're not even trying. We've gotten such good boxes like the Alien Pops, where it's like the pizza boxes or just... There's been so many good ones, and then this is just one of those ones where they're like, okay, we're going to make it look like a pop box. And it's like, ah, that's not cool. The Captain America and the Nick Fury, these are all right. I mean, yeah, if they're end scene pops, then like, eh. I definitely don't remember that Captain America, but I think the Nick Fury does look really, really cool. Unfortunately, like you said, if it doesn't look as good in person, then that really, really sucks. Because when I seen this, I was like, wow, that is a really cool idea. And I like what it looks like, but that's just pretty disappointing. Then the Conan Pops, these are cool. I love Conan Pops. I have one. It's just the one where he's all orange, which is kind of, eh. but I do like that pop. And I do really, really like these pops as well. I will agree that that Aquaman is really, really nice. And 500 pieces, that's kind of a bummer because that will definitely be a pretty expensive pop. And yeah, I think it's a really good selection of characters here. I mean, with Child's Play, Aquaman, the new Wonder Woman movie back to the future and jurassic park like those are all five huge titles and good job and i'm just surprised that you weren't marking out harder for that marty mcfly that's going to be the end of talking about funko pop announcements obviously there will be fun tv funko pop announcements which unfortunately we don't get to talk about because that's later on tonight as we are recording this podcast our next segment and our last segment for the podcast will be our top 10 wish list for 2021 so last year we did a top 10 wish list for 2020 which had different pops different sets of pops and we decided this year to make it a little more unique is that we've decided we're not going to be repeating anything we said last year. And if it's from a pre-existing lineup, it's like super specific of like one or two pops from that lineup. But I'm going to say what the heck. Usually I would say, let's start off with MD, but I'm going to say start off with me. I don't know why. I'm just going to change it up. No specific order. And we're just going to go straight through. It's not going to be back and forth like our normal top 10 list. So starting off with me, First one is actually an ad icons, and that is the Burger King ad icon. If they made McDonald's already and Funko's just dipping their toes in the fast food industry, a Burger King ad icon would be amazing. So moving on to the next pop I had, it's from a pre-existing lineup, but I only chose one pop and it's one I really want. From How I Met Your Mother, it is the Barney Stinson with the rubber ducky tie. Such an awesome moment from How I Met Your Mother, and I think it would be awesome to have a Barney Stinson with a rubber ducky tie pop. The next two are pop albums, and I think it would be amazing if they did these pop albums, both from bands that I really like. First one I'm going to mention is Metallica for the 1991 Black Album where the pop would be the snake that you see like holographically on the front cover and you just simply just put a pop of the snake on there. And I think that'd be pretty cool, especially because that's an iconic album. And the next one, the Nirvana Nevermind pop albums where you have the baby on the front cover swimming in the pool. I think that'd be amazing. They could probably do In Utero also, but I think everyone would just want Nevermind more than In Utero though. But I mean, I'm down for both. So this one I listed down, I was actually watching a video last night and someone mentioned, I want to see pops of this. I'm like, oh my God, I'm writing this for my top 10 wish list on the podcast. How amazing would it be to have bananas in pajamas Funko Pops? 
B1, B2. You could do separate pops. You could do a two-pack. Bananas and pajamas would be nuts. This next one, it's an already existing lineup that's kind of starting already for the Sonic 30th anniversary lineup and already MD's thinking, I know where he's going with this. It's Knuckles. We need a new Knuckles. I don't even care if it's even like super Knuckles. We need a new Knuckles pop. The other one is all right. It's actually the best one of that OG set because the other OG pops are a little trash, in my opinion. This is for somewhat of an already existing set, but for an anniversary. And that is a Fast and the Furious 20th anniversary lineup. It would be the 20th anniversary of the first movie happening in 2021. And I would love to see a Fast and the Furious lineup where it's only pop rides. Like every single pop in the lineup is just a pop rides. This next one is also an ad icons, which I'm surprised I didn't list this last year. And that's Pepsi, man. People who know me best, huge fan of Pepsi. I got a bunch of Pepsi merchandise. I have a Pepsi sign that I got above my closet door. I have a picture set. I have just a bunch of Pepsi stuff, even old bottles that are, I think, in like storage or something. But And I think a Pepsi man ad icon would be amazing. And I know for a fact that that plus the Burger King ad icons would most likely be the only ad icons I'd ever get. So this next set is already a pre-existing lineup, essentially, but it's an anniversary for this. And that is a Monsters, Inc. 20th anniversary. I could have went with the Monsters uh, at Work, I think it's called, the upcoming Disney Plus series. But I think that's predictable, so I didn't want to really say that. So it'd be cool to get a huge new lineup of Monsters, Inc. I know we did two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. It was announced at a toy fair, but I want to see a new revamp of Mike Wazowski. Because we have not gone to Mike Wazowski since the OG waves and even the Monsters University wave. So I'd like to see with what pops look like now, how Mike Wazowski would look in Funko Pop form. And I think what they haven't done yet is like a Mike Wazowski with his top hat with like a clipboard. I think that would be a cool one that doesn't affect the value of the OG one. The Abominable Snowman, make it a six inch, have a snow cone or even the tray of snow cones. I think that'd be amazing. And then... A Sully with the sled pop rides to go along with that scene. I think that would be cool. And one, for some reason, it's like my number one requested Monsters Inc. pop of a character. They have done one variant, but like this variant would be amazing. And that is George Sanderson when he is like completely shaven and he's got the cone around his neck. I think that would be sweet and it would be awesome if they made that kind of George Sanderson pop. And this last one, I had to save this one for last. And I actually mentioned the actor that's involved in this movie earlier on the podcast and how amazing would it be if we got Jingle All The Way Funko Pops. That would be nuts. We get Howard, who obviously that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, Phil Hartman's character, Ted, Myron, who's Sinbad. I had to write this one down, Jamie, because I probably would have said Anakin Skywalker. (laughs) Turbo Man, that would be cool. Even making a metallic variant, that probably would happen get booster with a flocked variant and then the evil character dementor i think his name is you just have him that would be awesome so i will get on to my list and i'm going to start with how i met your mother i think that the three pops we have now are just not good enough and i really really hope that we see more in 2021 so i have listed lily marshall a normal version of robin shabatsky And then I also have Barney with the rubber ducky tie, but there would be a chase version where he has Marshall's handprint on his face. I think that would be so great. Hopefully Funko's listening to this because that would just be amazing. I have biker mice from Mars listed down and I think those pops would look really, really great. It hits me with the nostalgia feels. So I would love to see some pops for that lineup. Then I have a brand new series of pops, not just like a lineup for animation. This would be called YouTube. And I didn't go into like a huge detailed list of YouTubers I'd like to see. I just simply said Vlog Squad I would like to see first, which would be like David Dobrik, I guess, and like Jason Nash, maybe a couple other characters, Jonah. Then I have an NHL pop. So this could be a couple different things. This could either be an exclusive to Canada, which it would have to be, but I think it could also be an exclusive to Tim Hortons. And that's because it is Tim Horton. I think that'd be great. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a Tim Horton pop yet. 
Then I have listed some Nickelodeon pops, more specifically, fairly odd parents, which I could also see this happening because we're getting a lot more Nickelodeon pops, whereas we just got that Danny Phantom and we just got Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. So I could totally see fairly odd parents happening. So I've listed Timmy Turner, Cosmo and Wanda. It could be a two pack or they could be separate pops. And then Mr. Crocker and then the Crimson Chin. Then I have one that's kind of different than anything else, and that is Auntie Donna. There are three guys named Mark, Zach, and Broden, and they are hilarious. They're like kind of like skit comedy stuff. They also do like songs similar to like Lonely Island type songs. Then I have my first ad icon on here, and it is actually one, two, three, four, five. It's six ad icons, and that is the M&Ms. I think those would be great ad icons. I'm surprised this hasn't happened yet. So I have listed down the red one, the yellow one, the green one, the brown one, the orange one, and the blue one. Those are like the main six. Then I have a pop here, which I don't know a category to put it on just because of what it is and what Funko would want to do with it. So to explain that, I have Little Dicky, but it would obviously be a Pop Rocks. But because his name is Lil Dicky, I feel like Funko might not want to put that on their box. So they could simply just call it Dave and have it based off of the TV show that's based off of him that obviously he stars in. And then it would be a television pop, which eh, I don't really like that idea. But at the same time, I don't really see them putting the word Dicky on a box. Then I have another ad icon, and that is the Nesquik Rabbit. This could also have a chase version of like a strawberry Nesquik rabbit, which would be pretty cool. I don't think he was ever pink, but I mean, there is strawberry syrup to make strawberry milk. So I think that'd be cool. Maybe even if it's just like he has a glass of it in his hand, that could be the different exclusive. So yeah, Nesquik rabbit, I think would be really, really great. And then last but not least, it is an existing set that is very near and dear to my heart, but I think really does deserve more pops. And that is the Muppets. And I have listed listed down Scooter, Sweetums, which would be clearly a six inch pop. He is a huge guy. And then Statler and Waldorf, obviously people love them. If you don't know who they are exactly, those are the old men, the hecklers. And then I have Beaker. I could go on and on listing characters, but I figured I would just keep it short and sweet with five, which I think would be a nice wave to get in 2021. So that's my wish list. That's going to be the end of this week's podcast. If you enjoyed this week's podcast, make sure you smash that like button to let us know that you're enjoying the content being provided to you guys on this channel. Comment in the comment section below about your opinions about this week's Funko Pop announcements and what's your wish list for 2021. What pops do you want to see made in 2021? Press that subscribe button for more content like this podcast and any other videos we do on this channel in the future. And press the little bell beside it to be notified of when that future content content gets released. And if you haven't yet, follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at a Funko Podcast. It'll be listed in the description below. But anyways, guys, thank you for listening to today's podcast, and we hope to see you guys next week for the last set of Funko Pops we will discuss for the year and our top 10 list of December 2020 Funko Pops. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Are you listening, Funko? Are you listening? Please be listening. Peace in, peace out.